Hi. 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 We celebrate that day when we got when Jerusalem was reunited, reunited, reunified. Yeah, yeah. We celebrate that day, and um, I think everybody has a special place, a special memory. Um, and I want to hear about yeah, else memory okay. of your shalim. So, um, for me, Jerusalem is where I, I did high school, right? And also, my uh, national service. I was in Jerusalem, in the same high school. <laughs> <laughs> and I studied also the same year at the Michlala in Jerusalem and Machon Oh, wow. And I really, I, w- I thought I was getting married. So I wanted to get in back of me some, some courses mm. <laughs> to not be burdened with all of it. I did all of the, they have in the Michlala, they have a test, it's called Bikut. Okay. And they test you about all kinds of uh, subjects in uh, the Bible and the okay. Halacha. So I did all of those really during that year. <laughs> and I wow. never wound up studying there in the end. <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it because I love studying. So so it didn't like burden me. I didn't okay. I never regretted doing that. I loved Aww. it. Uh, I took some courses also. Uh, so that's what I did that year, and then I, I went to the States for a year, and then I studied at Haifa U for three years, and I didn't finish my BA because my father was sick and I missed out on some classes, and then I came, after my father passed away, I came to Jerusalem to Hebrew U, and wow. hard to finish up and take some more phone courses, <laughs> and that's like where I dated Boaz. Ah, <laughs> he was in Hebrew. You no, no, he was in New York, Jerusalem. Yeah. Aww. So yeah, <laughs> so we have a lot of romantic walks Aww. over the city, <laughs> making snow angels. <laughs> the snow. You guys did. You guys did snow angels on your dates. Yeah. That's adorable. <laughs> Second date, our first date, we went to the Rova. Okay. We went to the Kotel. And we had a beautiful time. And then I think it was the second date or something like that, that we met in Arnona, which is pretty far from where I was living in uh, Matersdorf. And they, we ran out of buses, so we had to walk. That's a long walk. And I had new shoes on. Oh, oh, uncomfortable. I did a lot of walking. Also during high school, you know, I used to hike from Beit Bagan, from where I studied in Korev, uh, to the Kotel. To the Kotel. Yeah, I remember doing that. Then a lot, just that was a lot of walking, <laughs> you know. I was just going to say that. Like, it's like, a, it's like a city where you have to walk and you have to, um, you have to like explore the city and, 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 Get to know the city through through walking. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think there's something about your shine that gets into your bones, and it doesn't leave. Like yeah. the minute it gets in there, it, it there's something in there that just you know like it's just like so, that magnetic pull. Yeah. What is it for you? Oh wow! Oh my gosh! So many memories. So many. Today you go into your shine, and it's like a, a city to run your errands. Yeah. Um, but I remember. I remember the first time I came to your sign, and you, you're 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 going up, right. you know, and and on Highway One, and all of a sudden there's like this excitement, you know. You're, I was in my grandparents' old car, and the car was running like if you tie the string then the fan will blow. And if the b- fan starts blowing, then it will give a boost to the gas, like that type of car, like spit and gum. And and, and, and you're going, oh, is this car actually going to make it up there? And, 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 I'm, and I'm worried. And I'm worried, yeah. you know, because 
like I, my grandparents are were the ones that were driving and i'm like is this car gonna make it yeah 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 this car's made of plenty of time and my when i first and it's just so you're like excited because you're going up and like there's like this not only physical elevation but this like like spiritual something spiritual inside me was like i'm going to resign i'm going to resign <laughs> I just remember this now as we're talking. Uh, so we're coming into a and you used to pass through um, uh, Givet Shaul, yeah. like angels, right? Yeah. And we get into angels. We, we're passing, we're passing, we haven't hit angels. And I, I'm smelling. And I'm starting to smell this amazing smell. And I'm like, like I, I cannot get enough <laughs> of this smell. And I'm like, what is that? And my, my grandpa, what is that amazing smell? And my grandparents turn to each other and they said, oh, that's angels. And I said, what? They're like, angels, <laughs> angels smell like that. <laughs> I'm like, angels, they're like, oh, angels are baking. And I'm like, I'd heard that you were was like a holy city, but nobody ever told me that angels were walking around the city and, and baking. And it would never occur to me that angels would actually bake, you know? And, and I'm like, and, and I'm like, and I'm smelling. I was, I'm like, like, what else do angels do? And they're like, oh, they make pizza and, and they make croissants. And, and I'm, I'm not hopping. I'm not getting it. And I'm like, well, do they drive buses? Do they drive taxis? And my grandparents were like looking at me like, what? what? Like, Angels is a bakery to that. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I think that 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 smell, and to that day, to the day, yeah. like whenever I smell angels, I'm like, angels. <laughs> angels are walking around with their halos. Um, I, I think that you know, and then and then you hit the hotel. I was I was nineteen when I came to the hotel. I saw the hotel for the first time. I mean, I must have seen it when I was little, but um, that that in that feeling of familiarity, you know that 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 I'm home, and and you know you touch the wall, and it's like there's somebody that knows me so intimately so 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 deeply that i'm like okay i don't want to let go like I, I i i'm i'm here like you know so okay well i totally relate to the story about the car because our car used to get stuck all the time uh going to jerusalem uh if we went the regular way if we went there Hebron, okay through Hebron, so usually the car could make that that route uh, she was okay with that. Uh, <laughs> we used to stop on the way and buy grapes from the Arabs, and it was like everything. It wasn't uh, dangerous. Right. It, it was to like totally normal to go via Hebron. You just decide if you want to go another way or, or that way. And then, but the regular way to Jerusalem, our car is like prayers. <laughs> <laughs> that, that it would make it. That it would make it. I really remember that as a kid, and um, for me, the Jerusalem was like so different from Be'er Sheva because Be'er Sheva is very, very flat, mm. and Jerusalem was like this majestic Ooh. thing for me. It was like all the hills and it made it like really impressive as a as a kid. That's that's those are my memories. Wow. Um, as an adult, it's it's different. Like it's like the cold, the snow. Mm. Um, has a lot of uh, good memories for me. <laughs> I also during the years that I studied in Haifa, uh, my second year, I my schedule wouldn't allow me to go to the lessons that I used to go of Ravzini and and the Technion. Okay. And Haifa, you had no religious mm. anything. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I went on a bus and I saw a guy with a kippah getting off at the university. So I told him, okay, you and I, we're going to be chavruta. We're going to study Torah together. I was very religious and I really, I needed it. Right. So the second year, and then... He told me about the Shurim of Rav Zini and I got connected with a, with a congregation there. But the second year, I couldn't make it because of my schedule. So I wound up, I saw an ad in the paper uh, about the Heritage House in, in the Old City. 
and I came from Shabbat. Uh, it said, you know, uh, if you're a student and you're looking for a place for Shabbat, so I came for Shabbat. Oh, wow. And it's a reach out program for, for Jews all over the world to come and get to know what is Shabbat like, what is Jew Judaism like. And okay, so they found me out that I'm religious. <laughs> And then I asked them that I should be a counselor oh, on the program. Oh, fun. Okay. And I used to come every other week to Jerusalem. And uh, I was a counselor in the nice. city. Oh, my and God. I really got to meet a lot of wonderful families. Wow. And some of them we were, I got really close with. And it was so inspiring wow. like to be in Shabbat. Go daven at the kotel. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so that's awesome. also part of my Jerusalem. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Money is not an object. Okay? Yeah. You can live anywhere. It has to be in your shine, not by the beach. Yeah. Today we're talking about okay. your shine. Yeah. Anywhere in your shine, you can have, okay, no, not live. You can have a house because you're going to live by the beach. But you're going to, you can have a house anywhere in your shine. Yeah. Where is it going to be? Um, it has to be someplace that has some quiet in it. Okay. Um, probably, you know, not too far from the Kotel. They have that nice, uh, above the Sultan, uh, the Sultan there. Oh, um, I know where you're talking about. Mishkin Oh, I love yeah. that oh. Either that or Nachlaot. Nachlaot, totally. Nachlaot is, is really fun because it's not too far from anything. Mm. And, uh, you know, you can find quiet spots there, but you can also go to the Shuk scene. My theater is there. Mm. I studied theater for... Three, four years in the Psych Theater. I'm also now taking part. I go every Friday. Right. And so, I'm you in the inclusive th theater. Amazing. And yeah, I did it with my son and now he decided he doesn't want to do it. Yeah. So you're doing it by yourself. So I'm going by myself. And it's also, it's very... It, it, the theater has a very warm spot for me Aww. and also the whole culture scene is also mm -hmm. right around the corner over there right. I went last night with my mother-in-law to a show and a cafe it's a cafe oh, oh, that fun. they also have shows where is it it's called nocturnal and it's on the uh, of Hillel oh on the top of Hillel oh wow right? at or Betzalel? No, it's on Betzalel. It's on Betzalel. And, you know, I love culture. Mm -hmm. I think if I would be living in the city, I would be there like twice a week at least, you know, uh, at a show. Mm. Or yeah. I really would have to have a nice budget for that. Oh, that, I was going to say, like a nice budget. <laughs> you said oh, money we? not... Okay, okay, right, right, right. Money's not enough. Right, fine, <laughs> fine, fine. object. Hmm. I keep telling you, I feel like I'm like, you know, Beit Dash is going to be rebuilt. Yeah. So, real estate prices, like right now, in by where the Muslim quarter is, like the shabby Muslim quarter, right? Yeah. By like above the Lionsgate. I mean, prices are probably cheaper. Yeah. And we should buy in now. Yeah. Before there's the big rush. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. But I okay. That yeah. Yaakov doesn't say. I agree. Yeah, where would you live? In the Muslim quarter? No. Where would I live? I would love to live in Nachlaot. Nachlaot is just, ugh. Um, I would love to live in the old city. But not like the ritzy, kitsy part where everybody's like all the tourists and ugh, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, I love the old Jerusalem. Like the, the old charm. Like it's being rebuilt now and it, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not what it was. Like it's not, it's just not like all these buildings and all these, like, what was that song? Um, you Shalai Shalai, where, you know, he talks about all these yeah. people who have different images of Jerusalem. And, you know, I think, I think, you know who I think of a lot of times? Like, when I think of old, old, old Jerusalem, um, that song where he says, you know, he would give people bus rides um, without paying. Yeah. I think of Zico. 
Uh, <laughs> you know, he used to live in that old, old, old Jerusalem. And, and when you think about what people did and had to go through to live in your shine and the conditions yeah. that, they, that they had to live in, like, yeah. unreal. Yeah. We, we went on a tour with my in-laws, and they told us our, their Jerusalem stories. Oh. It was several years ago, oh. Oh. a while back. Wow. And, yeah, so, like, they didn't have a bathroom inside the house. They had, a, like, to go outside. It was a hole in the ground. It was, the cooking was outside. Everything, it was like, uh, uh, you know, they, they had the houses around uh, a, a, a sort of kind of yard. And... <laughs> They cooked in the yard. Your parents in law lived in Givat Shaul. No, in... they lived um, in Ge near Geula. Okay. So they lived there, and uh, so we saw we saw like where they lived and how small it was and where they built their sukkah and where the shul was. Everything. Wow, and that it, is so meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And for me also, Yerushalayim is um, Rabbi Raphael Levine. Yeah. My love. Sweetest my rabbi love. I ever oh. met. It was such a chutzpah that he died. <laughs> yeah. It was, <laughs> he left me bereft. Yeah. We used to go to him all the time. Wow. All the time. I just went once. I just went once. But... He was like this little zaby that always had a smile and the type of person that always had a candy in his pocket and like it was like okay come sit on my lap little girl and everything will be okay not it didn't happen but that was like the impression yeah, yeah. that he gave me i'll tell you a story yeah okay so my father we didn't tell my we didn't tell river file anything yakov took my father to river file i don't know he was going through something i don't know and river file just looked at my father and he said to him you're a Kohen, and you should be living in Israel for Beit HaMikdash. This is many, many years ago already. And, and we're just like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is before they made Aliyah. This is before. And, and it was just, oh, he was such a sweet man. Yeah. I loved yeah. him so much. I, I remember um, coming to him, and I really, really wanted to have another baby after Hodaya. And... I had a miscarriage right before Pesach it was uh, before and then my my sister was in a pigua she she got hurt by a stone in her head uh, then yeah it was thrown at her yeah <laughs> by very lovely Arabs and <laughs> and so after all that turmoil um, also, my friend's husband, they discovered he had cancer right after Pesach. And I came with all these emotions. And I also felt that I was, like, in some ways being a bad person. And I wanted to discuss it with the rabbi. So I had a blessing for me, a blessing for my, my friend's husband, and uh, discussing how I can be better. Wow. And I came to the rabbi, and I remembered to ask for a blessing for, for, the, for her husband. And of course, I asked for a blessing for me, and he said, um, I bless you, you should have a son, and, uh, and come and tell me. Come and tell yeah, me. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. All the time. Come and tell me, you know. And I totally forgot about me being bad. Because his eyes were so good. Aww. You know, it's like he didn't see anything bad in me. How can I see anything bad in me? You know? I love that. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. I love that. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. <laughs> oh. And I really, I got pregnant and I came again, but he was, he was sick and I couldn't come in and tell him. So, so and then he died. Yeah. I haven't found anybody <laughs> to to take his place. Yeah. Apparently there is people in your shine. Yeah. Um that like the old, 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 old people. We have to look them up, find them. <laughs> also another tzaddik from Jerusalem was the Rabusha that I got to meet. Rabusha West? Rabusha 
I don't remember his last name. I think I have a book about him somewhere over here. Wabusha. I don't know, he's called Wabusha. So he's uh, a really, really nice, nice person, mm. nice rabbi. He's still alive? Uh, no, he passed away too. Uh, the way I met him was when my father was hospitalized in Jerusalem and in Karen. Um, he got a, like a blood transfusion transfusion because he had leukemia, so he had to mm. have all his blood replaced, all all this wow. bone marrow transplant right. okay. and stuff like that. So, so there was another couple there that they were chazrim b'tshuvadik, you know, and they were connected to this rabbi. So we became me and her, we, we became the best friends. And so she took me to the rabbi after my father passed away. Wow. And I was like crying a lot at that time. I was like so, it was so hard for me to lose my father. He was like a very special person. And, and the rabbi, you know, he sat with me for maybe an hour. Wow to talk to me about it and in and the meaning of a soul and he said you know a person's soul does not uh, disappear it's eternal and you're gonna feel your father later on in life through your children through the good things that you do I love you're, that. You're, you're gonna see that he's gonna be even more a part of your life that now that he's only a soul uh, rather than when he was like physically and it was very hard for me to grasp that but I, I do feel like with the years going by that it is very true because wow. I do feel my dad a lot it reflects like through wow. my kids and through all kinds of little things you know something that they'll say and I say oh that's yeah. from Abba <laughs> it's like Hi, Abba. It's so nice Aww. to hear from you again. <laughs> so, yeah, I also got a, a blessing before my wedding. I think I managed to get a blessing from him. And so he's also like, it's like, and I also feel connected also to Rabbi Arya Levine, even though I never met him, right. because the stories, and he's so connected to Jerusalem, and you can see where he lived, and you, mm -hmm. can, you can go to the jail where he visited the... Uh, the prisoners and so a lot of things in Jerusalem even though they happened like a long time ago when you walk in Jerusalem you don't feel th that it was so long ago right. you know? <laughs> right. like the I guess that's why it's called the eternal city yeah it's like you, you feel the history and also but I have something I have to say about the Kotel okay that the Wailing Wall, for me, now, is like more of like just a wall. Okay. I don't feel an emotional connection so much to it, because I know what's beyond. Beyond, yeah. I know that the true, true holy place is not the Wailing Wall. And I think for a long time, um, it was like a consensus that the Wailing Wall is the most holy place, and that's it. And now the awareness is okay. yeah. that, no, there should be a temple on the mount. There should be a place of worship that is not just a wall, <laughs> you know? Uh, welcome to, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I, I, I do, I really think, first of all, the te holy temple needs a site, a website. You want to build it? For sure. I, I don't know if I want to build it personally, but I, it, it needs a website. It needs an app. Totally. I, I always say that um, instead of uh, like real sacrifices, you just choose one on your app. You pay <laughs> for it. <laughs> your, 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 your logic solves a lot of problems because I'm going back to, you know, the, the, the Tarantic cars that went up to your slime. And I'm going, how are these suckers going to have sheep and cows dragging with them? Or what a mess. You know, you're on the Rakhivet, you're on the train, and you have to bring all the sheep and the cows. It's going to be a mess. Yeah. It's going to be a, such a bad again. You're going to have, like, people 
you know, with their sheep. This is my sheep. This is your sheep. How dare your sheep make kaki on my kid? It's going to be a big balagan. Your, your, your reasoning makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I I was thinking about like like how like you know if if the taranta didn't make it up the hill to your sign how is it gonna be with the cow and the sheep and the horse and the donkey and the it's gonna be yeah it's gonna solve a lot of problems yeah and uh, vegans won't have any problem with that Hmm? you know it won't be a problem for vegans won't be a problem for anybody you're solving a lot of problems yeah. I, I, I really let's let's work on getting the Beit Hamikdash built because we, we kind of need it. But yeah. We can't really we've we've discovered we can't solve our problems by ourselves. We kind of yeah. need God, yeah. and God needs like a a base. We need we need a base to to you know connect. And you you know when I think of it, I mean this is even more wild. Okay. Okay. I'm listening. We might even need to build it virtually on the Temple Mount. On top of whatever is there right now, you know, you can have a whole virtual seal. You can go inside. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, no, no. What you're saying, like, like it says that there's like a, um, a, a Jerusalem of, of high up, a yeah. spiritual Jerusalem, and there's a physical Jerusalem. And whatever happens on the physical, it happens also in the spiritual. So if you're saying virtual, then, um, then that solves a lot of problems. A lot of problems. Yeah, so we can both have our own, you know. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I don't know. We can be creative about this, yeah. So, um, I, I really wish that every Jew around the world would come to Jerusalem, like, at least once. At least once for a while to, you know, to... To be inside the city, mm-hmm. inside the holiness, to feel it because it's like a whole different level. It is, and it's something that's very hard to explain. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was in the states, like I felt that I was missing out. Uh, that there was something like essentially missing my mm. spirituality. And I remember when your brother came over once uh, to eat by us, and my brother. Yeah, he came here with, before he got married. Before was, uh, he was, he was here by us for a meal. Okay. Maybe with you guys as well. <laughs> okay. And we got into all this discussion about um, uh, living in Israel versus living in the states and uh, in Canada, whatever. And he said. You can't compare, you know, we have all these wonderful parks and amusement parks and stuff. He was, he was a teenager, anyway. So I said, but, but the spirituality mm-hmm. is something that you can't make it. Right. You can't, it, it's something so beyond uh, the regular stuff that you're used to. Right. And I told him one day you're gonna feel it. One day you're gonna miss that. I'm I'm wondering which brother it was, Shalomir or Ellie. Ellie, I think. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Funny how you remember that. It's yeah. Crazy. So now he lives here. Huh? Now he lives here. Thank God, everybody's here. <laughs> so we wish everybody a happy Jerusalem day. Whether and you tell us about your Jerusalem experiences. Where is Jerusalem in your heart? And what do you think about my app? <laughs> I think we barely scratched the surface, you know, yeah. because like I remember falling in love in your shine and I remember having my heart broken in your shine. Oh, I have I... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> and, 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 and in so a pie many... shop. In a pie shop. I don't know if you remember there was this the Jerusalem pie shop. Where was it? Um it was like in the city. It was a little bit like off on Ben Yehuda. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was like a dark, candlelit place, very romantic. I was dating this guy for like over a month, and we really hit it off. And he said, "I have something really important to tell you." And I was like, oh, "Yay! Yay! Yay!" yay. <laughs> and then he said, "No, I'm not gonna see you anymore." <laughs> <laughs> so that was, and it was it was uh, the eve of 
uh, Adar. Oh. Rosh Chodesh oh. Adar. And I was like devastated. I was so devastated. But thank God. Thank God you made it to who you're married to. And yeah. And no angels in, in, on your no, dates. No, the worst thing was like the why. Why he dumped me. Okay. Because like the first day he saw me on Shabbat. Like, I was dressed up, and I had a little bit of makeup on, and my uh, contact lenses. Okay. And then the second time, we met in Haifa, because I was studying art there, and I had on my shmate to, to paint, mm -hmm. and my glasses, and a ponytail, and he said that there's something about my looks. He couldn't... Uh, <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> so that is to he saw from me for who I was. I but was a very uh, schlumper, uh, messy person uh, at that oh, time. Oh, my god! And he was like this very um, tidy uh, <laughs> person. <laughs> Also, do this little for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And getting lost in the Arab market, and being <laughs> scared, and not knowing where I'm going, and doing the forty day hotel thing. Like, there's so many. Like, now that we've started talking about it, yeah. All of a yeah. sudden, I have this desire to just meet Jerusalem, like have a tova day in Jerusalem, and just reacquaint yeah. myself yeah. with that amazing city. Yeah. So I think we have to do that. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. we've been talking a long time today. Yeah. And um, we, first of all, we wish everybody a happy Your Shine Day. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe. And um, if you haven't subscribed to Your Shine, subscribe. Um, <laughs> and, and hopefully we should, we should merit to what Yael said, that we should have a temple and that it should be soon and it should solve all the problems. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next week. Huh? Yeah. The schmooze. Bye. Bye.